Hey there, folks. This is Russ Colchimero. Some of you know me from my podcast, Russ's Rock and Roller Coaster, and I'm also a science fiction, fantasy, and mystery author. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I am sick and tired of all this doom and gloom living in this dystopian world. I want to have some fun. I'm looking forward to Bill and Ted 3, and I think some of you are too. So if you like your sci-fi comedy like Bill and Ted, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Third Rock from the Sun, um, Groundhog Day. Well, I've got my own sci-fi comedy series called Finders. The first one being Finders Keepers. The sequel being Gen uh, Genius de Milo. And the third and final book in the series being Astropalooza. Now, in the first book, Finders Keepers, you've got our two uh, backpacking buddies, Jason and Theo. Um, they're loosely based on a series of backpacking trips that I took through Europe and New Zealand set against a quest for a jar that contains the universe's DNA. And it incites all sorts of madness. Well, in the second book, Genius de Milo, um, after the guys have saved the day in the first book, they inadvertently make matters worse. And what's happening now is that um, the minder of the universe, who is sort of the God character, is having a battle of wills with Milo, who is the great disruptor, sort of his uh, cosmic foil. And they're battling over the fate of the earth. And our backpacking heroes, Jason and Theo, um, have to try to save the day once again. Um, in this setup I'm gonna read from, there's um, a galactic realm called Eternity. And Eternity is sort of this, think of like Hollywood, where they make movies and TV shows, except that in eternity, they create the universe. That's kind of, it's an industry town. And um, the setting from the chapter that I'm going to read is in eternity. And this is from Brigsby's point of view, who is in fact the minder of the universe. And we're gonna set up kind of um, what we're gonna see here. I'm just gonna parch myself for a second. All right, you ready? Uh, so he's in his apartment, he's got a big, snazzy apartment and he's with his personal attache who is Larry who he calls Lawrence okay here we go it began with a flicker eternity yes of course because that's where all creation originates or even just a single idea a notion a tickle on the back of the brain alerts you to the possibility that something is brewing something delicious strange alluring you're not quite sure what that glimmer might be that flicker that tickle but whatever shape and form it takes Whatever it eventually becomes, well, you know you're onto something. But this was a different kind of flicker. As the minder of the universe, the presence overseeing the cosmos, it was Brigsby's job to notice these kinds of things. Yet as the host of Breakfast with Brigsby, the top rated talk, so, talk show in eternity, Brigsby was an entertainer to the masses, hidden in plain sight. He needed to interact with Eternitarians at least enough so that he could gauge their response to his grander endeavors. But even the good folks of Eternity weren't ready to know just who and what he really was. So talking to them through their TV sets about food, fashion, and relationships made it a heck of a lot easier to conceal the fact that he was also responsible for the creation of the universe and everything in it. Uh, oh, if I didn't mention the people in eternity, nobody knows who the minder of the universe really is. He's sort of this amorphous, faceless creature, but we know who he is. Larry, the TV's fritzing again. I thought you took care of it. Yes, yes, keep your shirt on. And it's not fritzing, it's just a flicker. Larry swiveled the massive flat screen and looked in back. Here, see, the plug is loose. Here we go. Oh, my dear Lawrence, you always have the lugubrious tonic that soothes my achy temperament. You'd think I would have had my fill of loss by now, but I just love that Sawyer. A bit of a temper on that one, but he's feisty. I like that. Loss made me crazy, Larry said. Too many dead ends, and don't get me started on that ending. When entertaining guests, Brigsby drank blue martinis, always a blue martini. But when he needed to unwind, nothing did the trick like sitting on the couch in a silk bathrobe with a snifter of chocolate milk. His slippered feet rested on the coffee table. Now, now, Lawrence, don't be such a whiny McWinerson. It was twisty and fun and set on a cozy tropical island with beautiful people in compromising positions. Sometimes that's enough. And how could you not love Hurley? He's the best. So funny. My apologies, sir. And don't call me sir. You know I hate that. Brigsby may have had power and influence beyond the scope of comprehension, but his appearance was that of a frail, uh, wrinkled, middle-aged man who could be easily floored by the flap of a butterfly's fart. 
He, shut, he shuffled in his seat so that his chocolate milk sloshed within the snifter, peeking over the lip, spilling into his lap. Ah, oh, will you look at that. Lawrence let out a wry smile. Not only did he serve as executive manager of the CBM warehouse, the storage facility sec securing cosmic building material, the universe's liquid DNA, the building blocks of all creation. He was also Brigsby's personal attache. As such, he gave Brigsby the business now and then, uh, just to keep him honest, minder of the universe or not. Brigsby wiped his robe clean. Ha ha, you are qu you're quite the jokester tonight, aren't you? I think you've done enough. enough. Now let me get back to my show. Uh, it's the one where Desmond keeps flashing back and forth through time to find Penny. It's so romantic. Tell me you didn't just love that one. Yes, of course, that was pretty good. But before I go, Brigsby offered an, exa an exasperated sigh. What now? Have you seen the flicker? Lawrence, really? I just want to watch my show. Yes, you fixed it. You're a peach. What would I ever do without your keen abil ability to juggle the wire in? No, not the TV. Out there. Earth. It's. Lawrence stepped up to the window so that his reflection mirrored back at him. The distant sky was black, peppered with stars too numerous to count. The magenta pinwheel of the Andromeda galaxy swirled in the distance. Nearby was the permanent nothing of Miles Smear. It's flickering, B. It's twitching. It's fluxing. Yes, fluxing. Exactly. It's fluxing. Brigsby sighed again. I know, Lawrence. I know. Oh, well, should we look into it? Brigsby lifted the remote and paused the episode. He swirled the snifter and took a healthy swig. First thing tomorrow. I just don't have the strength right now. I decommissioned 34 star systems today. Breaks my heart sometimes. There was a look on Brigsby's face. It wasn't the good look. Lawrence returned to the fluxing earth and then back to Brigsby. Might I ask, how bad? It's that Fakakta jar again. What, you mean, that Jason Medley jar, the Theo, Medley, the Theo Barnes jar, that one? That's the jar from the, first, from the first book. I thought the boys took care of that. Ira, Howard, they said not to worry, that we were all set. Brigsby sipped his chocolate milk. Yes, he said, they did. They used to be a lot more reliable. Lawrence stared into the great expanse. Of the countless celestial bodies in the universe, Brigsby had taken a special liking to Earth. When he commissioned the planet's creation, he had it written into the design blueprints that the inhabitants be fashioned with the innate ability to evolve into beings far greater than their consciousness would allow them to initially perceive. If they were ever to reach their true potential, the inhabitants of Earth would need to survive their own self-destructive impulses long enough to strip away their ego and realize that their very existence was only the first step toward a much grander design. The flicker, Lawrence said, the flux, I admit, I hadn't noticed. How long has it been like that? A while now, Brigsby said. It hasn't resolved. It's so like this damn, t so like this damn TV, it's going to need a, a manual adjustment, a loose wire, I suppose. How much time do they have? On the surface, Lawrence had asked a seemingly straightforward question. But as applied to the standards of eternity, time was not a simple conceit. The, the passage of time could speed up or slow down. It could leap ahead or jump back. It could travel in loops. It could bend, but not break. It could twist, flatten, knot, and gyrate, as well as oscillate, pendulate, undulate, and rotate. It could also whirl, pearl, revolve, slant, spin, expand, and retract, and when it really got going, whiz, shimmy, shake, buckle, tangle, tremble, tread, roll, flip, although not flop, and even completely reconfigure, and it could all happen simultaneously or in any configuration. Brigsby clarified to the degree that was possible. The flux is sporadic, but the pace is picking up. If they don't get to it soon, rare for Brigsby, he looked genuinely sad. Earth will flux right out of existence. I'm sorry, B. I know how much you like that little planet. Yes, well, I am rather fond of it, but that's not my biggest problem. When Brigsby said he had a problem, Lawrence never knew quite what that meant, given the countless cosmic issues that arose on a rolling basis. But in this case, he understood this to be a problem with a capital P. B, what is it? What's out there? What else? Brigsby finally got up and in his pink bunny slippers shuffled to the window. Milo, he said, he's back. Oh, not that miscreant, Lawrence said. I thought we had more time. How did he reconstruct so quickly? 
That's way too fast. Though the fate of existence was summarily at his whim, Milo was one irritant Brigsby could at least, could at, at best contain and then only for short durations. Even Brigsby didn't know how or why he himself was the minder of the universe, where that power ultimately came from, or what fibrous tissue ran through the grand consciousness. He had always been, and as far as he knew, would always be, until his time was up. And until that occasion presented itself, Milo would remain his eternal foil, the jester to his ultimate court. No idea, but he's out there mucking up my universe, and I'm not having it. Brigsby slurped down the remainder of his chocolate milk. If Milo's back this soon, it means he's up to something, and I've spent way too much time and gone to way too much trouble to let him ruin Earth for me now. There's no telling how much damage he'll cause or what else he has in mind. Brigsby refastened his robe tie and stared out into the universe. He motioned with his snifter. Hit me again, Larry. It's going to be a long night. All right, so that's a kind of a sample of what I've got going. Again, my name is Russ Colchimiro, and I'm the, uh, the host of the podcast, Russ's Rock and Roller Coaster, and the author of the sci-fi comedy adventure, Finders Keepers, Genius to Milo, and Astropalooza. So if you like things like Bill and Ted, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, Third Rock from the Sun, Groundhog Day, then I think this is for you. You can find all the books online on Amazon um, or on my website. Um, they're all available in ebook and print formats. And if you want some fun, some relief from all this madness and are looking forward to Bill and Ted three, I think this is something that you really enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed the reading and I'll be back for more and take care. And I hope everyone's doing well, stay strong, stay healthy. We're going to get through this and I'll see you guys soon.